Hi, I'm Chris from CodeReviewVideos.com and in this video we're going to get started implementing our wallpaper upload without tests. As we've seen already, we'll need to know two things. We'll need to know the temporary path, which is the location that PHP will have temporarily stored our uploaded file. And then we will also need to know the real path, which is the location that we wish to use in the longer term. And in our case, that's going to be our Symphony's project directory, then the web images subdirectory. Now the really interesting thing to me at this point is a question that I've often pondered when writing code with and without tests. And that question is, how would a particular part of our system turn out if we wrote the code without tests versus the same solution, but with tests? Would there be any difference? Because one thing that I hear quite a lot, and I've thought this myself and I've done this myself in truth, is that I will write code and I'll say to myself, I'll come back and write the tests later. And there's a great subtlety in there that's really easy to miss. And that's writing code without tests may lead to code that is untestable, at least not without extensive rethinking. Okay, so seeing as I'm not going to need the spec in this instance, I'm just gonna get rid of that and bring up the project menu. I'm gonna get rid of that one for the moment also. And then by way of a quick recap, we've got our form set up in Easy Admin Bundle. We've got our fields. And what we're hoping to do is when we upload this wallpaper as part of this save change click, this is going to trigger off the entity persistence process, which we're going to hook into using this pre-persist lifecycle event. Now there's a bit of a gray area here as to how we go from having a file here and then into our code and all of a sudden we've got access to this file in some way. So in using Easy Admin Bundle, we're kind of clouding over how that's happening. But essentially, by way of our configuration, so inside our config, config, Easy Admin Bundle, we've defined this form. The form knows that it relates to a wallpaper entity. And so when our form is successfully submitted, the file part of our wallpaper entity will be an instance of Symphony's uploaded file class. So knowing this, we're gonna try and solve two problems. So let's write these out as a to-do. And our first problem is going to be how we move the uploaded file. And the second problem is how do we update the entity with this additional info? So that's gonna be like the file name, maybe the width and the height, and if we were being very thorough, the slug also. So let's tackle that first problem, this move the uploaded file. To do that, we're gonna to need to get access to the entity because the entity has the file. And remember, if we've not hit the return false, then we must be dealing with a wallpaper at this point. So what I'll do is I'll just type in our entity, which we've not yet created to be a wallpaper. So let's get access to the file, which as we've already said, will be an instance of uploaded file. So we'll have a look at that in a sec. Entity, get file. I'm gonna press Command and O on the Mac and then to say uploaded file. This brings up Symphony's uploaded file class. And you can see uploaded file extends file and file extends SPL file info. So this means we've got access to a ton of different methods all because of that inheritance chain. So to be able to move the file as we're trying to do as our first to do, we need two pieces of data. We need the temporary location that we're currently storing that file in. And then we need the new location that we wish to store the file in in the longer term. So we can immediately say our temporary location is going to be file get path name and get path name is a method on the SPL file info and that's going to be the location that PHP stores the file in to begin with. So we've already solved one of our problems. Next we need to solve the new file location. This is a little bit trickier so to begin with we'll just say some nonsense because obviously that doesn't exist and then again we'll look to the file and we're not getting any type hints here, so I'm just gonna fix that straight away. I'm gonna go into here, and rather than re returning a string, I'll just say this is an instance of Symphony's uploaded file. And I think that's because at the top here, we're telling it that it's a string. It's actually, this is incorrect. We're gonna come back and sort this out. Let's just double check that we're good there. Okay, so that should be able to give us some nice type hints here, which it is doing. So if we go back here, then now what we can do is we can say get the client original name. Now this is entirely dependent on your circumstances, but this is my theory on this. So get client original name is going to get the name of the file as it is when someone uploads it. So if we look inside our images at the moment, 
you can see I've named these images in a certain way. And this is pretty good in terms of like search engine optimization. So if you go to Google image search and you search for landscape summer flowers, chances are this image, if this was a live website, would be pretty fitting in terms of a Google search result. Now we're obviously interested in capturing as much traffic as possible. And so to have these search engine friendly file names is a boon for us really. Now this works because we as administrators trust ourselves and if, if you think about it, if it's just us that's running the site, maybe it's like as a hobby site for learning or whatever, then the chances of us doing something malicious to our own website are pretty slim. And the only way we're, we're accepting uploads is through our admin panel at the moment. So I'm okay with using whatever file name that I use to upload the image, if that makes sense. However, if you're in the real world and you're accepting file uploads from untrusted users, or you just don't trust the other admins or whatever, then come up with a better solution to this and have a look in the show notes for one potential alternative to this. Anyway, so we're trying to move the file. So now that we've got these two bits of data, kind of, we can easily do that. We can say from the temporary location to the new location and we should be good. But of course, this isn't really going to work because it's nonsense. So the path that I really need here is going to be that kernel.rootdir or if you're on Symfony 3.3 onwards, kernel.projectdir and then upper directory in our case because we're using the rootdir back to the web and then into the images directory. Again, we covered this a little bit earlier in this course. Now I could inject that into the wallpaper upload listener, but instead I'm going to use this as an opportunity to make a couple of changes that I think will improve the overall system. So inside service, we've got a file mover at the moment. And I'm gonna make this a little bit more specialized, but I'm also going to make this into an interface. So I'm gonna extract an interface from the file mover. And I'll just set this to file mover I to begin with. I'm gonna come back and change this. And yes, I want to add it to Git. I'll get rid of that bit. Tidy this up just a touch. So set that to file mover. And then I'm gonna rename the actual implementation to be a little bit clearer about what this is. So we'll call this the local file system file mover. And in there, we will implement file mover, set this to be local file system file mover. And now we can rename that back to what it should be. And because we've made a few changes here, we're gonna to need to update our service definition because we're no longer just a generic file mover. We're now a local file system file mover. Should update this as well. And the idea really here is that we've got this file mover, which is generic. Now it's an interface. Maybe if later on we wanted to implement like a fly system variant on this and we were storing our images on S3 or something along those lines, we could implement an S3 file mover and hopefully our implementation shouldn't need to change from the perspective of the wallpaper upload listener at least. We just need to then inject the S3 file mover instead of injecting the local file system file mover. That's the benefit of interfaces really. Now I don't want to tie up the logic of how we get the right path for our local file system into the wallpaper upload listener. After all, we have just extracted the concept of moving a file. It makes no sense now to have this very tightly coupled local file system path generation all tied into our wallpaper upload listener anymore. So what I'm going to do, jump into services YAML and do this sort of back to front. I'm going to create the service definition first. I'm going to have a new service, which I'll call the wallpaper file path helper. Now we know that we're going to need to pass in this kernel root DIR, but whilst I'm doing that, I might as well pass in the full path that I want this to go to. So again, we'll go up a directory because kernel root DIR points at the directory of app kernel. App kernel lives under app. So we need to go up a directory to get back to the root and then down a couple of directories into web images. So I could do that, I suppose, inside the wallpaper file path helper implementation, but it means changing the implementation if I ever want to change the configuration. Okay, so let's create this service. And the class is just gonna be this wallpaper file path helper. We're gonna need the constructor to get access to that kernel root DIR web directory, which we'll just call the wallpaper file directory. Okay, alt and return on a Mac, initialize the fields, saves me a job. Don't worry about the red underline there. My project is set to PHP 5 and that's a PHP 7 scalar type hint. And then I'll just create a new public function called get new file path. And that's going to take one argument, which is going to be the new file name. And what we'll do is we'll just return a concatenation of this wallpaper file directory, which is the path and the new file name. And I don't need a slash there because inside my service definition, I put on a trailing slash. Even though we don't have a service definition for our wallpaper upload listener yet, I'm just gonna add in another constructor argument and we'll worry about this when we come to it. So I'll say wallpaper file path helper. And again, 
Alt and return on the mark, initialize those fields. Not too sure why it's not picked that up. There we go, just need the appropriate use statement. And then I can get rid of this, and I can say this, wallpaper file path helper, get new file path, and I'll just pass in the outcome of file, get client original name. So to wrap up here, let's add in the service definition for our wallpaper upload listener. Again, I'll just take a copy paste of one that we've already got. And this time I'll call it a doctrine event listener and I'll call it the wallpaper upload listener. And this is gonna live in the event listener wallpaper upload listener class. And again, that just matches up entirely to what we've got there. This takes two arguments. And if at all unsure, just look in the wallpaper upload listener. We've got a file mover, which is that interface. So anything implementing that interface can be passed in, which in our case will be the local file system file mover. And then we've also got the wallpaper file path helper. And the, the argument order here does matter. So we'll just take a copy of that, duplicate that, and then just copy that bit and drop that in as well. So at this point, we're about halfway there. This won't actually work at this point. If we try to submit the form, we're going to get some issues, but we'll get on to fixing those issues in the very next video.